The summer of 1984 saw a fulcrum of disease in the gay ghetto. At St. Vincent's, the emergency room was visible behind enormous windows on the corner of West 11th Street and 7th Avenue. Before the crisis exploded, how many hundreds of times had I walked past that window, oblivious to the small kabuki dramas enacted there? Now I found myself choked with panic any time I came near. One sticky afternoon, I slowed to measure the epidemic through the plate glass, praying to see only strangers. Three quarters of the seats were filled. Scanning the rows, I could see that every third or fourth man had the look. Sunken cheeks, sparse hair, eyes that showed fear, shoulders that bent in pain. One, all spots and bones, balanced painfully on a pillow he brought along from home. Another seemed to be dozing. His head was cocked back onto a companion's arm, and his mouth and his eyes were both wide open. The blind, like horses and snakes, don't need to close their eyes to sleep. How to Survive a Plague is a witness account of the plague years of the AIDS epidemic, the years between 1981 and 1996, when there was no effective medical treatment for an HIV infection and death was almost certain. And it chronicles the work that was done largely by patients and uh, activists who uh, schooled themselves in science and then confronted this kind of lackadaisical research establishment to help by joining in as partners, identify, test, and bring to market the medication that has made HIV largely a, a survivable and treatable condition.